Hello friends, welcome to my second lecture on applications to the problems of potential flow. As we have seen in our last lecture, harmonic functions play an important role in hydrodynamics. Uh, to illustrate this point, let us consider the two dimensional steady motion of a non viscous fluid. Two dimensional means that the motion of the fluid is same in all planes parallel to the x y plane and therefore, it is sufficient to condition, con consider the motion of the fluid in the x y plane. By steady we mean that the velocity is independent of time. Now, considering the complex representation of the velocity field, velocity field is given by b equal to p x y into unit vector i plus q x y into j with the function f, we have f z equal to p x y plus i q x y, i is iota here, iota equal to this i is equal to iota root minus 1. So, when you uh, uh, can consider the complex representation of the velocity field, you get the complex function f z equal to p x y plus i q x y, where p x y and q x y are the components of the velocity. You can see here p x y and q x y are the components of the velocity vector b in the x and y directions. So, uh, and uh, the vector is tangential to the pass of the moving particles of the fluid. Such a path is called a streamline of motion. If z t is equal to x t plus i y t is a parameterization of the path that a particle follows in the fluid flow, then the tangent vector to this uh, path will be given by dz by dt equal to f dx by dt plus i dy by dt must coincide with f z t. So, uh, dx over dt is equal to p x y Okay, and dy by dt will be equal to q x y. The family of solutions to the system of first order differential equations, this you can see this is a system of first order differential equations. Uh, its uh, uh, family of solutions of this system is called the streamlines to the planar flow associated with the complex uh, function f z. Now, let us consider f z equal to z conjugate equal to x minus i y. So, you can see here uh, x is equal to uh, uh, z conjugate is uh, z is equal to x plus i y. So, z conjugate is x minus i y and now we have uh, written p f z equal to p x y plus i q x y, where as you uh, know p x y and q x y are the components of the velocity in x and y directions. So, comparing uh, we get uh, p x y equal to x q x y equal to minus y. Now, we know that we have d x by d t equal to p x y and d y by d t equal to q x y. So, uh, p x y is x. So, d x y d t equal to x and d y y d t equal to q x y which is minus y and thus we have d x y d t ok. Now, d x y d t equal to x, d x y d t equal to x gives d x y x equal to d t implies that x is equal to some constant times e to the power t integrating both sides we can see x is equal to c 1 e to power t. Similarly, d y by d t equal to minus y gives d y over y equal to minus d t. So, this implies y equal to uh, c 2 times e to the power minus t. So, we get when f z is equal to x minus i y z conjugate then x and y are given by c 1 e to the power t and y is given by c 2 e to the power minus t. Now, in order to plot the curve z t equal to x t plus i y t we eliminate t in the equation 2. Okay. So, you can see here we have x is equal to c 1 e to the power t y equal to c 2 e to the power minus t. So, from here you can see uh, when you multiply x and y x y equal to c 1 c 2, c 1 c 2 we can write as a new constant c. 
So, eliminating t we get x by equal to c and uh, therefore, uh, x by equal to c for different values of c give us rectangular hyperbolas. So, the particles in the planar flow associated with f z equal to z conjugate move along curves in the family of hyperbolas x by equal to c. You can see here x by these are x by equal to uh, if your uh, c is constant then you get the hyperbola in the first and uh, third quadrant. If your c is negative you get the hyperbolas in the uh, second and fourth quadrant. Okay. Uh, now, you can also see how we have uh, 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 mentioned the directions uh, of the flow here. You can see that from here x is equal to uh, c 1 e to the power t by equal to c 2 e to the power minus t. Okay. So, let us see here x equal to c 1 e to the power t by equal to c 2 e to the power minus t. Okay. So, that x by equal to c okay, where c is 1 c 2 is equal to c. So, e to the power t is always positive we know e to the power t is always positive e to the power minus t is al always positive. Okay. So, if c 1 and c 2 greater uh, if c is positive then either c 1 and C 2 both are positive or C 1 and C 2 both are negative. Okay. So, what will happen if C 1 is positive, C 2 is positive, okay. you can see here okay, if uh, x by is equal to C. So, when uh, uh, x is positive it means C 1 is positive. So, as uh, 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 by x by equal to C. So, when you are uh, uh, direction yeah when your x increases you see by is equal to some constant divided by x. So, when x goes to uh, 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 when x increases okay, x increases by decreases. So, x is equal to c 1 e to the power t by equal to c to the power so, when t goes e t increases x increases okay. and here what happens you see when x increases uh, when t increases. x increases because of c 1 e to the power t x increases and uh, when t increases y decreases. Okay. Because y is equal to c 2 e to the power minus t. So, when t increases e to the power minus y decreases. So, what happens when, when time increases okay, uh, the fluid flow is in this direction like this. Okay. Uh, you see uh, when t increases uh, by by decreases. So, the value of by decreases and the value of x increases also the fluid flow is in this direction. Okay. Similarly, here in this quadrant uh, what happens uh, when c 1 and c 2 both are negative. So, here what will happen x will be a negative of e to the power t. So, when t will increase okay, uh, x will be negative here y when c 2 is negative y will also be negative so x and y are negative. So, when t increases okay, what will happen uh, x will go towards uh, x will go to um, uh, 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 minus infinity uh, when t will go to 0 when t will go to uh, t will be increasing x will go to minus infinity and here uh, when x uh, t will go to uh, t will go on increasing then this will go to 0. So, y will go to 0 and therefore, the fluid flow is in this direction. So, the fluid directions of the fluid flow are determined by uh, uh, the fact that as t increases what happens to the values of x and y. So, the values of x and y as t increases uh, I mean determine the direction of the fluid flow. So, this is how we decide the directions of the fluid flow, uh, the particles of the fluid flow. Uh, move along the family of hyperbolas x y equal to c here. Now, let us to take another uh, function f z equal to z conjugate square which is x minus i y z conjugate is x minus i y. So, x minus i y square and when we square this you get x square minus y square x minus y whole square gives you x square plus i square by square i square is minus 1. So, x square minus by square minus 2 i x y. Uh, 
Now Fz is equal to Pxy plus Iqxy So, Pxy is equal to x square minus y square and Qxy is equal to minus 2xy. So, this is how we get the values of Pxy and Qxy. Now, dx by dt is equal to P, uh, Pxy, dx by dt is equal to Pxy. So, we get dx by dt equal to x square minus y square and dy by dt is equal to qxy which gives us minus 2xy. Okay, so, what do we get? We get two uh, equations dx by dt equal to x square minus y square dy by dt equal to minus 2xy. So, what we get dy by dx equal to dy by dt divided by dx by dt. Okay, so, this is equal to minus 2 x y over x square minus y square. Okay, now, we have to solve this equation. So, uh, we can solve this equation. Uh, this is a homogeneous equation. You can see homogeneous equation. Uh, so, let us put y equal to b into x. So, that uh, b plus x db over dx equal to dy over dx okay and then uh, b plus x db over dx this equation okay this equation dy over dx equal to minus 2 x y over x square minus y square gives us b plus x db over dx equal to minus 2 b x square divided by x square times 1 minus b square. Okay? So, we can cancel out x square and then what we get x d b by d x equal to uh, minus 2 b upon 1 minus b square minus b. Okay? So, what you get uh, when you uh, take the LCM 1 minus b square we have minus 2 b and then we have minus b uh, then we have plus v cube. So, v cube minus 3 v upon 1 minus b square. Now, uh, separating the uh, x and variables x and b we have uh, 1 minus b square divided by v cube minus 3 v uh, db equal to dx by x. Okay? Now, uh, you can see we have a uh, dx uh, 1 minus x v square upon uh, v cube minus 3 v dv equal to uh, dx over x. Okay? So, we can break it into uh, uh, partial fractions and then integrate. So, let us take uh, consider 1 minus b square upon b cube minus b 3 b. I can write it as 1 minus b square upon b times b square minus 3 uh, which is 1 minus b square b times b minus root 3 and b plus root 3. Then I can write it as a over b plus b over b minus root 3 plus c over b plus root 3. The values of a, b, c we can find a is equal to uh, 1 minus b square divided by b square uh, you remove b from here remaining is b square minus 3 and put b equal to 0. So, we get uh, this is 1 and this is minus 3. So, minus 1 by 3 b is equal to uh, 1 minus b square divided by remove 1 minus b minus root 3 here. So, b into b plus root 3 and then put b equal to root 3. So, we get 1 minus 3 divided by root 3 into 2 root 3 and we get here minus 2 divided by uh, 
2 into 3. So, what we get minus 1 by 3 here also and then C similarly is 1 minus B square over B into uh, B minus root 3 and B put B equal to minus root 3. So, what do we get 1 minus 3 divided by minus root 3 into minus 2 root 3 and what we get here minus 2 divided by uh, this is how much 2 into 3. So, you can see minus 1 by 3 here also. Okay. So, thus uh, 1 minus b square over b cube minus 3 b this is equal to uh, minus 1 by 3 a b c all are equal. So, 1 upon b plus 1 upon b minus root 3 plus 1 upon b plus root 3. Okay. So, integral of this okay, will be integral here equal to integral of dx by x. So, what we get minus 1 by 3 and we get ln b plus ln b minus root 3 plus ln b plus root 3 equal to ln x plus some constant let us write ln c. Okay. So, what we get here a 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 ln b plus ln a ln b ln c is ln a b c. So, we have ln uh, b into b minus root 3 into b plus root 3. So, b minus b square minus 3 okay, equal to ln x plus ln c and uh, you can multiply by uh, minus 3 here and then what do we get here. So, ln b into b square minus 3 is equal to minus 3 ln x minus 3 ln c. Okay. So, what we get here uh, uh, this gives you uh, b into b square minus 3 b square minus 3 equal to uh, x to the power minus 3 some constant c dash into x to the power minus 3. Now, by v is equal to by over x. So, I can write here by over x by square over x square minus 3 equal to c dash over x cube. So, this gives you by into by square minus 3 x square equal to c dash. Okay. So, you can see here x square by minus 1 by 3 y cube equal to c dash this same as that. Here you see uh, by into by square minus or you can say by cube minus 3 uh, x by x square by e is equal to c dash. Okay. So, this solution is uh, uh, same as the solution here we have 3 x square by minus by cube is equal to c dash. Now, taking c dash equal to plus minus 2 by 3 in this uh, uh, equation here let us take the uh, particular values of c dash okay, and then we have plotted it here. So, c dash is equal to plus minus 2 by 3 plus minus 16 by 3 plus minus 18 the streamlines are as shown in the figure. So, these are the streamlines for the values of c dash equal to plus minus 2 by 3 plus minus 16 by 3 plus minus 18 by 3. The direction as, as we have said uh, earlier the directions are de decided accordingly by taking a parameter. Now, uh, if there exists a function phi uh, called velocity potential such that uh, p x by equal to partial derivative of, of phi with respect to that is phi x p x y is equal to phi x q x y is equal to phi y then f z f z was p x y plus i q x y. So, f z will be equal to phi x plus i phi y the velocity vector is the gradient of the velocity vector uh, uh, velocity potential because velocity vector was this velocity vector was p x y i plus q x y into j which we have written in the complex form p x by 
i p x y plus i iota q x y. Okay, so b is actually uh, p x y is uh, phi x q x y is phi y. So velocity vector is equal to uh, this, which is nothing but grad phi in two dimensions okay and the equivalent form of this is fz equal to uh, iota this okay so this is the the vector ve velocity vector is the gradient of the velocity potential this means that the fluid flow is a rotational or circulation free because the when the velocity vector is gradient when uh, b is equal to del phi we know that curl of grade phi equal to 0 ok. So, curl of the velocity vector will be 0 and this implies that uh, the fluid flow is rotational. rotational or we call it circulation free. Now, uh, if the fluid is incompressible that means the density does not change with the time, okay. the density is constant then the divergence of the velocity vector is 0 and hence uh, the uh, p x y del over del x p x y plus del over del y q y q x y equal to 0 because uh, when the divergence of the velocity vector divergence of the velocity vector is del dot b. Okay del dot b means uh, oh uh, this we have written as uh, 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 this ok. So, this is uh, del p x by over del x del q x y over del y. So, if the fluid is incompressible that is the density is constant then the divergence of the velocity vector is 0 and hence we have uh, p x y is uh, phi x. So, and q x y is phi y. So, we get this this is nothing but this ok which is equal to 0 divergence of b is equal to uh, 0 ok. So, this is equal to 0 and this implies that phi is a harmonic function. Uh, now, let us uh, assume that psi denote the conjugate harmonic function of phi then we can write the associated analytic functions omega z omega z equal to phi x y plus i psi x y. Uh, this function phi x, uh, this function omega z is uh, very important in characterizing the flow it is called the complex velocity potential. The one parameter family of curves psi x y equal to constant con consider the conjugate harmonic function and then the level curves uh, psi x y equal to constant psi x y equal to constant gives you d y by d x equal to minus psi x over psi y. But since the function omega z is analytic phi and psi satisfy Cauchy Riemann equations. So, using Cauchy Riemann equations uh, phi x is equal to psi y and phi y equal to minus psi x we can write psi x is equal to minus phi y divided by uh, uh, psi y equal to phi x. So, this uh, minus psi x over phi y becomes phi y over phi x and therefore, phi y is q x y and uh, phi x is p x y. So, d y by d x equal to q x y over p x y and therefore, the resultant velocity okay, the resultant velocity of a particle is along the tangent to the curve because the uh, velocity of the particle has the direction given by see velocity is what velocity vector is the 
So, the direction of the velocity vector v is given by the slope uh, uh, by the by the factor uh, q x y over p x y and here what do we notice d y by d x equal to q x y over p x y. So, the resultant velocity of a particle is this is the slope of the tangent to the curve psi x y equal to c. So, resultant velocity of a particle is along the tangent to the curve psi x y equal to constant. So, the particle moves on the curve psi x y equal to c these curves are called uh, stream uh, lines okay? and the function psi x y is called stream function. Now, uh, the curves phi x y equal to c dash the level curves phi x y equal to c dash are called equipotential lines they uh, and we know that uh, phi x y and psi x y level curves phi x y equal to constant and psi x y equal to constant they cut each other at right angles. So, the uh, streamlines cut the equipotential lines orthogonally. Okay? So, note that uh, now let us consider omega dash z omega z is equal to uh, phi x y plus i psi x y. We know that if f z is a is an analytic function and u and b are its real and imaginary parts if f z is an analytic function and uh, its real and imaginary parts are and f z is equal to u x y plus i b x y. Then uh, f dash z, f dash z is equal to u x plus i b x this we already know. Okay. So, here omega dash z will be phi x plus i psi x, okay. but using again Cauchy Riemann equations psi x is equal to minus phi y we get uh, omega dash z equal to phi x minus i phi y. Now, f z is equal to we have f z equal to uh, p x y plus iota q x y p x y is phi x iota q x y is phi y. So, f z conjugate will be phi x minus i phi y. Okay? This implies f z conjugate equal to phi x minus i phi y. Okay? So, this is omega dash z equal to f z conjugate or we can say f z equal to conjugate of omega dash z. Now, let us discuss the flow around a corner the complex potential f z equal to let us consider the complex potential f z equal to z square when we put z equal to x plus i y z square gives x square minus y square plus 2 i x y this describes a flow whose equipotential lines are the now equipotential lines are given by phi x y is equal to constant let us compare this with this function. Okay? This f z is the uh, complex potential function omega z. Okay? Uh, this f z is same as this omega z. So, f z is equal to uh, uh, here f z is equal to omega z. Okay? So, uh, and omega z is uh, phi x y plus i psi x y and so phi x y equal to x square minus y square and psi x y equal to uh, 2 x y. Okay. Now, uh, so equipotential lines are given by phi x y equal to constant. So, x square minus y square equal to constant uh, uh, which are the hyperbolas they are they are give us the uh, equipotential lines and the stream lines are given by psi x y equal to constant. So, that means 2 x y equal to c dash. So, these give the uh, stream uh, lines and this give equipotential lines. The velocity components at a point are now velocity uh, vector v okay, is equal to p x y i plus q x y j. 
these are the velocity components Pxy and Qxy and we know that Pxy equal to phi x Qxy equal to phi y. So, Pxy equal to phi x and Pxy equal to uh, phi x equal to 2 x. Okay. So, Pxy equal to 2 x and phi y equal to minus 2 y. So, Qxy equal to minus 2 y. Okay. And so, the magnitude of the resultant velocity now we know Pxy equal to phi x which is 2 x Qxy equal to phi y which is minus 2 y. So, uh, magnitude of the resultant velocity will be velocity vector magnitude of the resultant velocity vector will be uh, P x y square plus Q x y square which is 2 x whole square plus minus 2 y whole square under root. So, this is 2 times under root x square plus y square. So, the magnitude of the resultant velocity is 2 under root x square plus y square. Now, you can see here in this figure we have the flow in a channel okay, bounded by the axis. This is this axis is y equal to 0, this axis is x equal to 0 okay. and uh, as we have seen equipotential lines are x square minus y square equal to constant and uh, uh, streamlines are given by 2 x y equal to constant. Okay. So, uh, when you take the constant c dash equal to 0 you get the streamlines as x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 these two streamlines are correspond to the value of c dash equal to 0. So, uh, the figure shows the flow in a channel bounded by the axis and axis are the streamlines. So, in when c dash is equal to 0 the streamlines are the x and y axis. x and y axis okay the continuous lines are the streamlines these are streamlines you can see these are streamlines okay given by the hyperbola you can see here c dash you can take as uh, because we are taking the positive quadrant so you can take c dash to be positive so x by equal to a square it will when c dash is positive i can write it x y equal to a square so these are x by equal to a square these continuous lines and the the uh, continuous lines are there for the stream lines and the dotted lines this dotted line okay this is the uh, uh, your uh, equipotential line this one okay so and the dotted lines are the equipotential equipotential lines are what equipotential lines are given by x square minus y square equal to 0 so this equipotential line is obtained when you take c equal to 0 okay c equal to 0 means y equal to plus minus x so this is y equal to x line Consider the complex potential uh, omega z uh, equal to c over 2 pi ln z. Let us consider this complex potential omega z equal to c over 2 pi ln z where c is a positive real constant. Then omega z is equal to c over 2 let us write the polar form of the logarithmic function z. We can write it as ln mod of z plus i argument of z. So, omega z equal to c over 2 pi ln mod of z plus iota argument of z and I can write that as c over 2 pi ln r mod of z equal to z we are taking as r e to the power i theta which implies that mod of z is equal to r and theta equal to. So, using polar form of the complex number z we have c over 2 pi ln r plus i eta c over 2 pi argument of z. Now, omega z is equal to uh, phi x y plus i, I psi x y. Okay. So, omega z equal to phi x y plus i psi x y. So, this gives you uh, phi x y equal to c over 2 pi ln r and psi x y equal to c over 2 pi r z. Okay. And then uh, what we get is omega dash z. Now, omega dash z we know is 
फाइव एक्स माइनस आई फाइव आई फाइव आई ओके फाइव एक्स माइनस आई फाइव आई एंड वाट इज फाइव एक्स लेट एस फाइंड फाइव एक्स इयर सो फाइव एक्स लेट एस फाइंड दिस गिव्स यू फाइव एक्स इक्वल टू और सी ओवर टू पाई पार्शल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ एल एन आर ओके सो दिस इज सी ओवर टू पाई पार्शल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ एल एन आर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स इज वन ओवर आर इन टू पार्सल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ आर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स नाउ दिस गिव्स एस आर स्क्वायर इक्वल टू एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस बाई स्क्वायर सो दिस गिव्स यू टू आर आर एक्स इक्वल टू टू एक्स आर आर एक्स इक्वल टू एक्स बाई आर ओके सो दिस इज सी ओवर टू पाई एक्स बाई आर स्क्वायर ओके एंड सिमिलरली वी फाइंड द पार्सल डेरेवेटिव ऑफ साई विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स सो पार्सल डेरेवेटिव ऑफ साई विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स सी ओवर टू पाई लेट एस रिप्रेजेंट दिस आर जेड आर जेड इज थीटा ओके सो डेल्टा ओवर डेल्टा एक्स थीटा ओके नाउ बट डू बी नो वी नो दैट वी हैव थीटा इक्वल टू टेन इनवर्स बाई ओवर एक्स सो वी डिफ्रेंशिएटेड पार्शली विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स सो वी गेट this one okay and this gives you uh, uh minus by over uh x square plus by square okay so this is minus by over r square so let us put the values then thus del psi over del x इक्वल टू सी ओवर टू पाई माइनस बाई अपॉन आर स्क्वायर सो दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ साई एक्स एंड हेयर इज द वैल्यू ऑफ फाई एक्स लेट एस पुट दीज वैल्यूज इन द एक्सप्रेशन ही आर ओके सो आई हैव पुट हीयर फाई एक्स माइनस आई साई एक्स Uh, so the, we, you get the same thing when you find phi x minus i phi y. So we get c over two pi r square x minus i y. Okay, and we know that f z. Okay, let us recall that f z equal to omega dash z conjugate. So we have omega dash z conjugate, and therefore. the conjugate of this is equal to c over 2 pi r square x plus i y okay so you can see f z equal to this complex form of the uh, uh, potential okay so flow the the flow you see if you write the v vector you see v vector will be v vector is will be a uh, c over 2 pi r square एक्स आई प्लस बाई जे ओके बिकॉज दिस इज द कॉम्प्लेक्स फॉर्म ऑफ दिटी पोटेंशियल ओके वी वेलोसिटी वैक्टर सो वी इज टू सो दिस मीन दैट द वेलोसिटी वैक्टर इज अलॉन्ग द डायरेक्शन ऑफ एक्स आई प्लस बाई जे वैक्टर ओके दैट इज द फ्लो इज डायरेक्टेड रेडली आउटसाइड दिस आर वैक्टर दिस टू सी ओवर टू पाई आर स्क्वायर इन टू r vector in the direction of r vector the flow is in the direction of r vector that means it is directed radially outward hence the given complex potential corresponds to a point source at z equal to 0 that is a source line x equal to 0 y equal to 0 in space the constant c is called the strength this constant c is called the strength or uh, the discharge or the discharge of the source if c is less than 0 then the direction of the uh, fluid flow will be towards the source okay the air flow is said to then the flow will be said to have a sink at z equal to 0 because the flow is directed radially inward a fluid disappears at the in this case a fluid disappears at the singular point z equal to 0 of the complex potential so this is the figure you can see the flow is 
uh, there is a source here the flow is directed uh, uh, readily outward ok. So, these uh, these are the uh, these are equipotential lines ok and these are streamlines these are streamlines because flow of the fluid L is along these streamlines and these are equipotential lines. This we can see here also um, you can see uh, we have phi x y equal to constant when you take phi x y equal to constant c over 2 pi is a constant ok ln so ln r will be a constant and ln r is a constant when r is constant ok phi x y equal to constant implies that r is constant and psi x y equal to constant implies r z equal to constant that is theta equal to constant ok. So, phi x y equal to constant means c over 2 pi ln r is a constant and which implies that r is a constant ok. r is constant means concentric circles ok. So, these are equipotential lines ok and then similarly psi x y equal to constant means c over 2 pi argument of z is a constant which means that arg z is a constant ok that means arg z is theta. So, theta is a constant ok. So, for the radial lines theta is constant and therefore, the um, uh, fluid flows along the uh, radial lines readily outward. Now, let us consider another example that of a gravitational field let a particle A of mass m be fixed at a point P naught and let a particle B of mass m be free to take up various positions P in space. Then we know that A attracts B and according to Newton's law of gravitational force the fo gravitational force P is directed from P to P naught. The magnitude of the uh, force is proportional to uh, 1 over r square where r is the distance between P and P naught and it is uh, given by uh, magnitude of P is given by c over r square where c is a constant and the constant is g into m into g into capital M into small m divided by r square where g is gravitational constant g is given by 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 says, uh, centimeter cube divided by gram centi second square. This is the gravitational constant and the p vector defines a uh, vector field in space. So, let p naught has coordinates x naught y naught z naught and the vector, uh, point p has coordinates x y z then the vector r will be given by x minus x naught into i plus y minus y naught into j plus z minus z naught into k and its magnitude r will be square root x minus x naught whole square plus y minus y naught whole square plus z minus z naught whole square which we have written as sigma x minus x naught whole square. And uh, the vector p then can be written as p is equal to uh, mod of p into a unit vector in the direction of vector p ok this p naught and here is p ok p vector is in this direction that is opposite to the direction of r ok. So, we divide r by its magnitude to get a unit vector in the direction of r and then we put a negative sign we get p equal to mod of p minus r over r and uh, uh, we know that uh, mod of p is equal to c over r square ok c over r square. So, what we get p vector is equal to uh, c over r square into minus r vector divided by r ok. So, minus c over r cube ok. Now, we know that we have r square equal to x minus x naught whole square by minus by naught whole square z minus z naught 
whole square the distance between p naught and p okay so when you differentiate uh, this with respect to x what you get you get this which implies r x equal to x minus x naught over r similarly r y if you find by get we get y minus y naught over r and r z equal to z minus z naught over r we get okay. Now uh, partial derivative of 1 over r is minus 1 over r square into r x so that is equal to minus 1 by r square x minus x naught over r so we get minus x minus x naught over r cube similarly uh, uh, the partial derivative of 1 over r with respect to y is y minus y naught minus y minus y naught over r cube and partial derivative of 1 over r with respect to z is minus z minus z naught over r cube okay so what we get here uh, this vector p is nothing but del of c over r why it is d over del of c over r you let us see that uh, del of c over r means c times del over del of 1 over r and del of 1 over r is what c times uh, iota uh, i Okay, this is what we have, uh, and this is how much uh, c times i uh, del uh, del over del x one over r del over del x one over r is minus x minus x naught over r cube. Okay, so minus one over r cube we can write here. Okay, minus minus c over r cube we can write here. Then this is x minus x naught plus j by minus by naught plus k z minus z naught which is r vector. So, this is minus c over r cube r vector ok. So, uh, del c over r ok p if you write p equal to del c over r what you get is minus c r over r cube. So, this uh, minus c o, uh, r over r cube can be written as del of c over r and uh, this means that the gravitational force p can be written as the gradient of a uh, scalar potential which is uh, c over r ok. So, the scalar function f x y z let us write uh, p equal to del of f x y z where f x y z is c over r ok. So, this f x uh, scalar function uh, f x y z equal to c over r is a potential of that gravitational field further if you differentiate 1 over r uh, uh, we, we have differentiated 1 over r with respect to x and got this ok uh, del over del x of 1 over r equal to this if you differentiate it further you get del square over del x square of 1 by r if you differentiate it further with respect to x we get del square over del x square of 1 over r and that comes out to be this ok. Similarly, del square over del y square of 1 over r comes out to be this and del square over del z square of 1 over r comes out to be this and when you add up all of them you get uh, del square of 1 over r which is minus 3 over r cube plus 3 r square over r to the power 5 which is equal to 0 and therefore, uh, f x y z equal to c over r ok del square of c over r is equal to c times del square of 1 by r ok and this del square of 1 by r is 0. So, this is 0. So, del square of f x y z equal to 
0. So, this f x by z satisfies the Laplace equation and therefore, this uh, gravitational uh, uh, this uh, function scalar function is called the gravitational potential. Now, uh, in the two dimensional case the potential function f x y okay, uh, is a harmonic function. Here you can see we have taken it in the three dimensions when you consider two dimensional case okay, then you get f x y equal to uh, c over r which satisfies the Laplace equation this one. In the two dimensional case we have this and then we say that f x by equal to c over r okay? that is c over under root uh, r is what uh, x minus x naught whole square plus y minus y naught whole square this is a uh, harmonic function. Okay? Uh, the heat flux across a surface okay let us consider a steady state heat conduction the heat flux across a surface is given by q equal to minus k grade t okay where t is the temperature and k is the thermal conductivity in the two dimensional case q is equal to minus k uh, now in the two dimensional case the del t del t will be del t over del x into i, I in plus del t over del y into j. When you write the complex form of this okay, in the complex form del t can be written as del t over del x plus iota this is iota okay, into del t over del y this is complex form of del t. Okay, complex form of del t and uh, so this is a q in the complex form is q x plus i q y and so q x is equal to minus k del t over del x q y is minus k del t over del y. Now, it follows that for a simple closed curve c in the z plane okay, representing the cross section of a cylinder and for the steady state conditions okay, that means no net accumulation of heat inside c we have q x derivative of q x with respect to x plus derivative of q y with respect to y equal to 0. Now, q x is equal to uh, minus k del t over del x q y is minus del t over del y. So, that gives you okay. So, So, del q y del y similarly gives you this okay. hence uh, this is equal to 0 which means that del square t over del x square plus del square t over del y square equal to 0 and this means that t is a harmonic function. Now, if u is the conjugate harmonic function of t then the function w z equal to t x by plus i u x by is an analytic function and the families of curves t x by equal to alpha u x by equal to beta are then respectively called isothermal lines okay, because along those lines T x by equal to alpha temperature remains constant. So, they are called isothermal lines and U x by equal to beta are called the flux lines W x W z is called the this W z is called the complex temperature. With this I would like to end my lecture thank you very much for your attention.